Hello everybody. Today I thought I'd remake an old video describing how functions of complex numbers can be described using an animation on a grid. I made a video a while ago, but since then I've added more functions and wanted to provide some context for it as well. If you haven't watched 3Blue1Brown's video describing this way of thinking, I will try and summarize his ideas, but do watch it because it gives a great explanation on the Riemann hypothesis as well. Let's first set up our complex plane. Here, the points which are reddish-gray are fixed and don't move, while the white ones follow their positions on the grid. We're going to have the grid transform so that the points move to their value when put through the function. For now, let's take a look at the function f of z is equal to z squared, which was originally shown in 3Blue1Brown's video on the Riemann zeta function. Since we're squaring the grid, the point 1 should move to 1 squared, which is still 1, so it will remain in place. i squared is, by definition, negative 1, so it should make its way down to negative 1, and negative 1 will move to negative 1 squared, which is 1. Pretty cool, isn't it? The rotating arcs are very beautiful, and it's important to say how those frames in between are actually made. I don't actually tell the computer to move each point individually straight to where it ends up. I actually tell it to change the exponent, because uh, I start off with f of z is equal to z, which is just the normal grid, and then I tell it to move to f of z is equal to z squared, and change the exponent with time. It's kind of cheating, because let's say we're animating any other function, we won't be able to just interpolate between z to the function. Uh, unless I just tell every point to move directly to where it's supposed to be. Uh, which leads us to ask the question, what happens if we don't cheat and just tell every point to move straight on a line to where it ends up with f of z equals z squared? This is what that animation does. This animation is just as interesting as the last one, but there's one catch with it. We can't show from here what z cubed looks like without going back and doing the original z squared first and changing the exponent up to 3 from there. So from here, let's go back and look at what z squared looks like using the method where we do cheat and move the exponent up to 2. Now we're going to move the exponent further up to 3. While these functions are pretty cool, it begs the question, what happens if we go the other way? What happens if we start with f of z is equal to z, and then move the exponent from 1 downwards to 0? Well, I prepared a couple animations. Let's go back to the animation for f of z is equal to z, which is just the normal grid. And then let's move backwards to 0. This makes sense as the entire plane ends up at the point 1, except if you noticed there's something weird that happened at 0, because 0 to the 0 is indeterminate, and it kind of doesn't get pulled into 0 like the rest of the points do. Now we could even move the exponent further negative. Why don't we try going to f of z is equal to z to the negative 1? Well, we could do that, but it's important to notice that uh, 0 to the negative power is dividing by 0, so it's kind of indeterminate, not really, but just annoying to deal with. So my uh, grid drawing hacks that I somehow made work together don't really work. I had to kind of tell the computer that 0 to the 0, or 0 to the negative power was 0, which is not, but I just wanted to stop complaining and kind of draw things kind of normally. So with that in mind, let's continue moving the exponent down to negative 1. And now we can even move further back down to negative 2. You can see this kind of looks a lot like going from z to z squared, which makes a lot of sense because we're really just squaring the graph for 1 divided by z. You could also see straight grid lines, but these are kind of artifacts because I don't want to dive into the code that somehow works and try to increase the resolution right now, but you get the idea from the image. These are supposed to be like perfect arcs. One other type of equation we might be able to do is arbitrary polynomials. So why don't we try f of z is equal to z squared minus z plus 1. That's definitely moving in a similar way that we'd expect z squared to, and it kind of ends up looking really similar to z squared. But one cool thing we could do is from here, tell each point to move straight to z squared because we can move between functions as well. Why don't we do that? In my opinion, this definitely shows off how the complex plane makes quadratics more complete. If I were feeling fancy, I could do that same transition, but instead of the points traveling in lines, I could reduce the coefficients on the terms to make them disappear. But I'll leave this as an exercise. You can make that work if you want to. Dive into the code that's in the description below, but honestly, I don't have time for that. If you know Python and want to play around more with some polynomials, you can download the code I put in the description. 
but for now, let's move on to functions such as cosine of z. The real line ends up compressed between negative 1 and 1 as we're used to with cosine, and this is a method of viewing the functions extended beyond their original domain of just the real numbers in a trigonometric sense. Continuing with trig functions, we could try tangent of z as well. Tangent again shows some artifacts due to how much it expands a part of the plane, but again you can get the idea of it. As well, we could try hyperbolic sine of z, which looks kind of similar to the normal trig functions in this kind of sense. Finally, to finish up, I want to show you two last functions. First, e to the z, which is very important with complex numbers. And now, finally, although we already saw 1 divided by z, I think it's cool to take a look at 1 divided by z if you just go straight from f of z equal to z to 1 divided by z without going through 0 first. This is actually my favorite animation because it shows a lot of cool things about 1 divided by z that we wouldn't know involving the imaginary part of the number just by looking at the real part that we're used to. If you're interested in more information, please check out the code in the description and also some more links uh, and details surrounding the process itself. Thanks so much for watching.